Hi students, welcome to another Mr. Ness screencast. Today's aim is yellow journalism, and here are your objectives. Please pause the video, look these questions over, and get ready to copy some vocab terms and take some notes. Today you're going to learn about a certain kind of newspaper reporting called yellow journalism. Yellow journalism is news coverage that emphasizes sensationalism or excitement over factual reporting. And that means that making the news exciting is more important than making it factually correct. Yellow journalism still exists today, but it was really popular in the late 1800s and early 1900s. Back then, the publishers of newspapers that engaged in this style of reporting realize that news is a business and exciting news sells better than boring news. So in order to sell more newspapers, the publishers started making the news as sensational as possible, even if that meant not telling the truth all the time. Yellow journals were targeted toward working-class Americans who, after a hard day of work, wanted some entertainment in their news. Now let's take a look at some characteristics of yellow journalism. First, yellow journals use really big headlines to grab people's attention. They also use images instead of just words. Second, yellow journalism focuses on controversial stories that people have strong opinions about, whether or not those stories are really that important. Finally, yellow journalism uses graphic emotional language. Graphic language is highly detailed or explicit, especially about uncomfortable topics like death or torture or murder. Emotional language is strong or exaggerated and is designed to tug at people's heartstrings. We've been talking about bias in class and there's a lot of biased language in yellow journalism. Here are two examples of newspapers from the same day in 1898. Can you tell which one is yellow journalism? Based on the characteristics you just wrote down, the answer is this newspaper on the left. This is the New York Journal. Notice the huge headline, awful slaughter. Also notice the emotional and graphic language. The headline doesn't say many people died. It says awful slaughter. Now compare it to the paper on the right, the New York Times which is not an example of yellow journalism. If you look at the New York Times, there's no big headlines, there's no pictures, there's no graphic language. If you walked by a newsstand, which paper would grab your attention first? This paper on the left, the New York Journal, was owned by a man named William Randolph Hearst, pictured here on the right. Hearst was a wealthy American businessman who owns several papers that use yellow journalism. He's an important figure in U.S. history, and you should learn his name, William Randolph Hearst. The other big publisher of yellow journals at this time was this man, Joseph Pulitzer. You should know his name, too. He was another wealthy newspaper owner who started the Pulitzer Prize prestigious award for journalism and the arts. Both Pulitzer and Hearst made huge fortunes by using yellow journalism to sell newspapers. The last thing I want you to know about today is the Cuban War of Independence and its relationship to yellow journalism in America. Let's go back to the year 1898 and look at the Spanish Empire Remember the mighty Spanish Empire? You learned about it in global history. Back in the 1500s, Spain conquered the New World. All of Mexico and South America 
and they also conquered the Philippines and some other islands in the Pacific Ocean. Between 1500 and 1800, Spain was one of the most powerful countries in the entire world. But by 1898, the Spanish Empire was in decline. Most of their colonies had fought and won wars of independence, and the only places Spain still had control over were some of the ones that you see on this map, like Cuba, Puerto Rico, the Philippines, and this little island called Guam. One of those colonies, Cuba, had been fighting its own war for independence. The leader of the Cuban independence movement was named Jose Marti. Jose Marti is like a Cuban George Washington trying to get freedom from foreign rule. So Marti and the Cubans were fighting Spain in the late 1800s. And in response, the Spanish government sent this man on the right, Valeriano Weiler, to fight back. Weiler was a ruthless general. He rounded up the Cubans, put them in concentration camps, and tortured their leaders. Back in America, the yellow journals loved reporting on the Cuban War of Independence because Weiler's atrocities made for dramatic, exciting news, and therefore news that sold well. The Yellow Journals published pictures of Cubans in concentration camps. They called Weiler the Butcher, and they generally depicted the Spaniards as cruel and sadistic. These stories were incredibly popular among American readers. You'll learn more about Weiler and the Cuban War for Independence in class. And now it's time to review the objectives. If you don't know the answer to any of them, just rewind the video and look again. I will see you in class. Bye, students.